Hey guys, quick vlog. Do web developers need to become server administrators? This is an interesting question because we've seen a move in the last several years where DevOps has become more complex than it used to be and having good DevOps is very important. Don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong, but it's gotten to the point where you're seeing web developers having to really get a pretty good understanding of how servers operate. So they're gonna to have to learn their Linux commands, they're gonna learn how to patch things, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Even per server provisioning comes into play. Now, I'm an old school nerd and I used to do that back in the day. In fact, when I started writing web apps for clients and for myself, I actually had servers in my own place. I had literal servers and I would stick them in closets. And I had, in at the time, one of the very first, one of the very first ISDN lines. It was, no, it was an ADSL line, excuse me. And I had 32 static IPs. This is crazy. If you know anything about static IPs, they're very rare. Hosts these days have a limited, a finite number of IPs. They don't want to assign them to people. You have to pay money for each of them. So back in the day, when this whole web thing was just starting out, I guess this is in 95, no, it was about 96. I got an ADSL line, had one of the first in Canada. I had 32 static IPs because the web was transitioning from HTTP 1.0 where you needed one IP per site. And then with 1.1, it allowed you to host multiple IPs, excuse me, multiple websites on one IP. Anyway, I'm going to nerd details. Point being is that back in the day, yes, I not only manage my own servers, I set them up, I uh, configured them, I had them in my place, I had the battery backups, I was patching them, I was keeping them up to date. And then after a couple of years of doing that, I got rid of that and I got a co-location, co-host location. Basically, I rented a server from a company and they took care of all that. They took care of the patching and the updates and so on and so forth. It was very good decision to do that so that I could concentrate on what I was doing. And that was developing web apps and websites for clients. Well, mostly web apps at that point. So fast forward to today, and what we see is that for modern day web developers, they have to get pretty good skill sets in terms of server administration and so forth. So now I have two types of dedicated servers. I have a VPS with DigitalOcean and it's pretty much hands off. You have to know your server administration. You have to patch and update your own servers. You have to, uh, if you're gonna be uh, installing and configuring the apps. In fact, we use a third party provisioner to make that easier. So it's almost like a step backwards when you use that kind of service, that type of cloud service, where you have to become pretty knowledgeable about server administration. And as a developer, I have problems with that. I have tremendous problems with that because all of a sudden the range of skills are, are expanded and we have to worry about things that the industry had fixed for us with private server hosting solutions, turnkey solutions, if you will. Now what I did is I found another company and they provide the best of both worlds. They provide hosting with a dedicated server, well, VPS, virtual private server, cloud hosting, but they also provide the turnkey management for you, including a control panel. So some of you might be going, well, come on, Steph, you gotta learn your Linux commands, you should do this, and maybe if you want to, but I think it's a waste of time that a developer should have to worry about uh, all the patches and all the uh, backups and the, roll, and, and, and the rollbacks and all this kind of stuff that really a system in, a system administrator should be handling. So I have both now. I have the dum dumb solution, the solution where you have to do everything yourself, and I also have the turnkey solution where they handle everything for you. And I have both going right now, managing the websites and the web apps that I manage and I have to tell you, the VPS, the turnkey solution, though I don't have the control or the power, the, uh, the total control and the power and the flexibility I have with the uh, 
the, the dub-dub solution, if you will, the solution where we have to do everything ourselves internally, I have total freedom with the VPS in the sense that I don't have to worry about patches. I don't have to worry about updates. I don't, worry, have, I don't have to worry about outages and rollbacks. They take care of the whole thing for me. They provide a nice control panel that makes it easy so we don't have to necessarily go in there with SSH. And this is kind of a cool setup because it's, it's an extra level of protection. Just in case someone, some junior dev working for me messes something up. They can't. It's not easy to do. In fact, it's very difficult to do because they put all these barriers in place. So there are certain operations that you can do, stuff that you might want to do day to day. You can do it through the control panel. But the stuff that could really have serious impact on the server, they manage that. So you have to put in a request and they're good. You get the request done in the same day and they will tell you, hey, that might be a problem, you know, this is cool, blah, 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 because all they do is manage servers all day, all day. They're experts at server administration, they're on top of it, they know the latest news, they know what patches have to be applied, whereas with the dum dum server solution where I have total control, all of a sudden I have to understand that or somebody under me have to understand that, and if you're a company that doesn't have 50 employees or 100 employees and you just want to concentrate on what you do, which is develop a web app or develop websites, you don't want to necessarily have to devote resources to that and have to worry about that in the back of your mind. So for me, even though there is this big move, especially with uh, DevOps, that web developers should really know their Unix commands well and so forth, I think it's gone a little bit too far in my opinion. I think that... I would rather be working with a company that provides those services for me so I can concentrate on what I do and that is delivering a great web app for my clients and uh, they can take care of the, all the server stuff. One of the smart moves that business people, the smartest business people make is that they surround themselves with support and people that can take care of jobs they not, may not be best at. Yes, I used to manage servers, but my server and mint skills are not greatest these days, that's for sure. And they don't need to be. Why? Because I got a company who charges pretty much the same as the Dum Dum server. They take care of that for me. I don't have to worry about it. I shouldn't have to worry about it so I can concentrate on the core of my business. When you get into development, when you get into business, you don't want to be spreading yourself too thin trying to learn every single thing out there. You learn your core, you concentrate on what you're good at. So I'm going to answer another question that came up in one of the, uh, the YouTube comments. Somebody said, I'm comfortable with the back end, but my, my design skills suck. I feel a little insecure about that. He said, what should I do? Well, you shouldn't worry about it because what you do is you either subcontract a great designer and you implement their designs in your back with your back end work or you use a nice looking template what i would suggest you learn as a developer at least learn the basics of design and that means learning about white space font use alignment layout just the basics it's almost mechanical it's almost mechanical it's almost logical what is logical and if you understand that, at least you can lay out something that looks pleasing to the eye if you follow the basic rules of you know, color matching. You don't want to mix cold colors with hot colors, typically. Uh, alignment, so things are aligned. Uh, consistent use of fonts. You don't want to have 10,000 fonts on the same page. Two max, two font faces I'm talking about. Uh, stuff like that. Now, if you get those basic design principles, then you can put up something, a skeleton, get your site going good, and then you can implement a nice template or just hire a top-end designer, come in and do stuff. So I was, in my career, I did both. I did everything because I came from a design background. Actually, I got a certif certification in photo lithography, and a big part of that was graphic design and layout. So I could do that at a reasonable, uh, reasonable level. If you look at the studio web course backdrops with the animals and the maps, and this is all me, I did that. And I spent a long time sort of sitting through that. And I have, again, I'm trained in design. That being said, uh, I would still use better designers than me to actually do the hardcore layout work and the tweaking and so forth. So I would be like the art director. I would choose the color schemes, the basic layout structure, uh, the UI, the UX especially. I spent a lot of time on UX because I think it's so important in modern-day app development, whether it be web apps or mobile apps or whatnot. 
But then I would hand that off to a, a dedicated designer who was really good at what they do. And the same thing with the back end. I've written lots of software back end, but now because I'm busy, I hand that off to people. And I try to find people who are superior in certain areas than me. I'm good with architecture, high level. I'm good with uh, laying out the code base so it's clean, simple, it's modular, it's updatable. In terms of getting into highly detailed optimizations and algorithms besides basic database normalization and, and you know top level things, I was never keen on that. I've done it, but it's been such a long time since I've done that kind of stuff. Uh, I use people who do it on a daily basis. It's, it's like anything else. If you're a fighter, you know, after three, four months of not training, you know that your timing goes down. So since I haven't sparred in many years now, my timing is not what it used to be. I could get back in the ring after a month or two, I'd, it would come back. But you don't have the same time. Anybody who's experienced in real fighting arts will, will tell you that. Same thing with programming, by the way. If at one point in your career, maybe six, seven years into it, you decide you might want to go into management or architecture, you're going to have to make that decision. I did that, in, I don't forget what year, seventh or eighth year into it. I said, okay, I had to decide, am I going to be a coder the rest of my life? Or am I going to get into architecture and management and so forth? I went the latter route, and I recognize now, like a fighter who hasn't trained in a few months, even though you can be a great fighter, like Mike Tyson, for example, he, when, when he would come back to training camp to get ready for fight, even when at his prime, it took him like a month or two before he was up to his level. Like he would sink really hard, he'd, he'd gain a lot of weight. And he would get back in the ring and, and tomato cans, guys who weren't very good, they're able to give him a really hard time until he got back up to his normal level in a couple of months. And then he was, you know, beating the crap out of everybody. Same thing with coding. So if you step away for months or a couple of years, your ability to write highly optimized uh, algorithms and so forth will be, uh, you know, it will be rusty like anything else. And you get back into it. Anyway, so I went off on a tangent, as I do sometimes. If you are code-centric, back-end-centric, you're a little worried about your front-end skills in terms of the look and feel, don't worry. I gave you the route. I gave you the, the game plan to handle that. And the reverse is true as well, right? You could, If you're good at front-end and you're good at making it look good and, and, and you're good at UX, user experience, you, divide, you, you can concentrate on that and then hire people to, to work on the back end stuff or partner with people to work on the back end end of things as well. So, and don't consider that a weakness. That's normal. One of the things I stress to people, and I used to stress in fighting, I said, don't try to be a jack of all trades because you will be master of none. What you want to do is you want to figure out where you're strong and then work on that, improve on that. And then bring in, surround yourself with people who will complement your skill sets, where they will be better at you on the design end of things, or maybe they're better at you on the back end of, end of things, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You do what you do best, partner with other people, and that's the way to go. So it's a super sunny day today. It's going to be eight degrees. I'm already sweating. I got my, uh, my Snoopy shirt on, and because I'm able to. I'm going to take the rest of the day off. I'm playing hooky. So I decided to re just record this video before I head out. And uh, that's about it. That's one of the advantages of working hard now, developing your base, developing your FU stash, stash uh, developing a nice base of clients, etc, etc, etc. It allows you freedom and flexibility. That's always been my number one goal is freedom and flexibility in my lifestyle. And development freelancing, starting a business, owning a business, this allows you to do all this. All right, I got to go drive. Bye-bye.